Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In this video, we're going to take a close look at something pretty cool. It's time for a package from China. When it comes to PlayStation 2, I really love the console. And also when it comes to handhelds, oh man, it's a jungle out there in China. Getting yourself a handheld, there are so many ways to play. But this PlayStation 2 portable handheld that we're going to review today is basically the next level, or better said, the extreme part of the handheld stuff that you can buy. But the reason I picked it up, because last year I did an other video about the PlayStation 2 portable, is it the best one, and I can tell you it was a freaking disaster. So now in 2021, there was a completely new version out there with many new changes, but is it actually better than the other nightmare that I reviewed last year? Okay, so in the package itself, we're going to get the power supply, the handheld itself with a nice casing, and of course, the USB stick or the adapter with a CF card. So this is what you're going to get, and it's not a lot. So you're paying a lot of money for these devices, and yeah, this is what you're going to get. The power supply is not your typical 12 volt one. Nope, this is a different one. This is a special one. This is an 8.4 volts. And yeah, that we're going to need, and... I'm in a different region, so I need to have a converter. Plug it in is basically the same like many devices. But this time, I always recommend, let's first plug in the plug in your handheld and then in the wall socket. But when I was sticking in my plug, man, this feels really tight. A little bit too tight, if you ask me. Beside the plug, we're going to get the on and off switch. And what I do like about it, we're going to engraving here that you can see which date this handheld has been made. Your CF card. Or better said, it's just a Sony adapter with a CF card. The brand itself is familiar that I've seen a couple of times in China. Come, come, get out. But nevertheless, a 32 gigabyte is more than enough for having like a small collection on your system. What I find really convenient with this is that a USB is just like any USB. You can get yourself a different stick. But when you edit your games, plug it in and you're ready to go. But there are two problems with this. First of all, it's a really old USB connection. So loading times are quite long compared with an internal hard drive normally. And the compatibility with some games is also an issue. But okay, so let's talk about something differently. Let's talk about how comfortable it is. Because when you're looking at the older shell and the new one, I must say, I was a big fan of it. It plays very comfy. But how big is it? Because this is a really big boy. Oh, I can tell you that. Look at this, when you're comparing it with the Nintendo Switch, it's getting really close, it's a little bit bigger, and of course, it's way fatter than it. Look at this man, it's one gigantic beast of a machine. But the mold itself is a far and out the same like the first version I've reviewed in 2020. Then, then there's the question, how is the weight? In total, we're having 740 grams. So yep, if you're playing this for a very long time, you go to get yourself a beefcake arm. Alright, so what did they change out more? Because the D-pad and the normal buttons were just freaking awful with the previous model. But the first thing I'm noticing is that we're going to get different analog sticks. They have changed it out with more like versions like the PlayStation 4. And I must say, it's way better. It's a big improvement, so I'm very curious how this is going to play. They added this tiny PlayStation logo. I like it. Finishing touch. But then overall, when you're looking at the left side, we're going to get the D-pad. The D-pad that I personally normally just hate. And of course, the PlayStation 4 analog stick. We're going to get the button for booting up the system, resetting. But let's talk about the D-pad. It feels kind of smushy. It feels kind of cheap. It doesn't be compared in a long way with the original one. And when playing, I was completely right. It is responsive compared with the older model. But playing this game and trying a move is just a mission impossible. I couldn't get any moves out. So that's a little bit of a bummer. How does the analog stick feel? And overall, it feels very nice. But the question is, how does it play in the end? And I can say that the analog stick is way better than the D-pad. And it's now smaller than the previous model, so it plays also way better. But okay, I'm a D-pad guy, so I am very disappointed that I couldn't play my fighting games with the D-pad and only with the analog stick. So by powering on the system itself and you're pressing the button once, you turn on the system 
That's basically how you also reset it. So when you're in a game and you just want to reboot into the OPL menu, you press the button and it will instantly reboot. You can choose a different game to play. By the way, loading takes forever. And of course, on the left side, we're going to get the LED that it gave us an indication how is the health of the battery. Green for full, orange for, let's say, 50% and red because you need to charge it. So with the previous model, we had a lot of issues and the four buttons were not even responsive enough to enjoy some gameplay. And it's the same with this one. Yep, we need to press them, and especially the circle. I don't know what's going on, but this one, you need to press it freaking hard. It's annoying. So let's show you. The three of the four buttons are responding a little bit better than the previous model, but you can see still I need to press them really hard. You can see that you need to press them really hard. It's, it's just really annoying, and it's not a very comfortable way to play. But this one, the circle, oh man, it's awful. And most of the time, it doesn't even freaking respond. So at the right side, we're going to get the nice places for joystick. And we have here the select and start. And also these are improved. They are like 3D printed, but they are clickish and they work way better than the previous model. But let's chit chat about the shoulder buttons. The shoulder buttons, yeah, I can be very positive about it because I really like them. They're big and they are completely different and they are just responsive. But the thing is, I don't understand why they can manage to use these 3D printed buttons on the shoulder buttons. They work very well, but they mess it up with the other ones. So let's play a short part of black. And I can say that playing this handheld feels very comfortable. I really needed to get used to the controls. It's a very long time that I even played a PlayStation 2 game with a controller because I'm a keyboard and mouse shooter guy. But this, man oh man, I must say it feels quite portable and comfortable. Even this thing is just gigantic. But nevertheless, if you need to reload, oh man, you need to press the button really hard. You basically need to think by pressing in the button, you know, and that is just making this game. It's still playable somehow because the shoulder buttons are okay, but an overall experience is not that great when playing black on the portable device. It's such a bummer. The PlayStation 2 Portable comes with a 7 inch display. And I must say the view angle are just okay. There are some view angles, if you're looking at this over here, you can see that it is not that great. And I've seen some better LCD displays, especially when you're going to pay a lot of money for a device like this. So I was a little bit disappointed seeing what you can go to get with this PlayStation 7 inch machine. And here you can see it is even glitching out. And that's what I talked about with the freaking USB and the memory card and OPL. <sighs> But at the top, we can also find two other buttons. One is for basically switching to an HDMI input. Not really necessary, but the thing is pretty cool. We can switch out to x -Pass ratio if you want to play it by 4x3. By so that's pretty neat, like with the previous model. When you're listening to the speakers itself, and also this is quite disappointing, and it didn't improve it at all. The sound is really disappointing, I can tell you that. So with the previous model, it was just a freaking hot glue madness in the inside. But I was with the new model, did they change it out? I can tell you, when I got the system itself, the mainboard was loose. So that was not a really good sign. So let's remove all of the tiny parkers and the two ones on the back. And let's see what kind of misery we're going to get today. Or is it not that bad? And so far, no, this is basically the only places to portable so far I have seen that has like two extra screws that clamps the two shells together. And I can tell you that's a good thing, that gives it a more sturdy feeling. 
Okay, so be very gentle to open it up because there are so many wires dangling. You can already see that the mainboard was moving around. So this is what you're going to get. Here we're having the OPL memory card that was also loose. It looks way better than my previous model I've reviewed. I can tell you that. So there is a positive side. And overall, it's a little bit messy, but I have seen some horrible portables in my life. But here at the left side, we're going to get a 3D printed case that holds the batteries in place. And at the right side, we're going to get the same result and no hot glue madness. Over here, we're going to get the ribbon cable that will be connecting to the PCB at the top over here. Because it's of course ribbon cable for the LCD, so this is one of the parts I need to remove. Otherwise, I can't replace the main board or put it in the right position. They're also using a completely different fan, and that fan itself is not that very loud. Here we're going to get the cable for the power for the LCD. Oh boy, you can see like the PCB is dangling. They basically forgot one screw to put it in. So there's going to get the first replacement. And this is not like it should be, of course. Oh, quality control. There is no quality control. So basically the mainboard is just dangling in the inside. This is... <laughs> They didn't even hot glue it or put it on a position. There's only one parker that is holding this piece of PCB on this place. It's a little bit of a bummer. You can see a more special custom made PCBs for the USB controller and other devices. The soldering is not that bad in my opinion. I can do a better job. So yeah, that was the main problem. One of the feet was already broken off, so there were only two screws in that holds everything to place. There is a mod chip installed, as you can see over here. So this is quite some modification on the main board before they're going to put it in. But again. Okay, so there were some separate parts loose in the PlayStation Portable. And the reason why I did this, because the bottom part, I think you can see it over here. We're going to get this gigantic PCB that goes from the right to the left that connects the batteries and they put it between it so the mainboard can make any contact. Oh, man, oh man, oh man. This is not the way how you do it. But they did fix the CPU fan. I give you like an example of how it goes in the loudest settings. So the CPU fan, I like. It's very silent. So in the end, I just basically glued the main board back in. There was no way of attaching it to the casing itself. They completely messed it up. Kind of weird thing, a little bummer. The quality control and overall of the paint job was not that great. It is better than the previous model, but it's still not perfect. And it's flawed and problematic in many ways. Oh, so it's a little bit of a bummer to see all of these damages and paint job flaws. For the money, yeah, they just need to do a very good job in my opinion. But in short, I am very disappointed with this. I was hoping to get a perfect working, just PlayStation Portable 2, especially when I'm looking at the controls, because it's still just that horrible like the previous model. If I can fix it, that is something I need to find out in the future just by opening it up like the other part. The D-pad, oh man, is just freaking unbelievable. But and overall, they did some minor improvements. But in my opinion, it's still not good enough, especially when you're getting this device, I'll paying a lot of money and your main board is just rambling inside the case. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family. It will be great to see you in the next video.